Hello, my name is Janelle Johnson, licensed marriage and family therapist. I am the CEO and clinical director of Bridges Family Life Center. We are a family therapy group practice located in Raleigh, North Carolina in the U.S. Today we're going to talk about creating family life that we love as indie families. A lot of times in neurodiversity, we talk about ourselves as a community. We talk about ourselves as individuals. We don't often talk about ourselves as families. And considering the very strong genetic component that many neurodivergent con conditions have, namely, especially autism, ADHD, and dyslexia, these have very strong genetic components. Um, it's important that we think about endears in a family context because that's how we exist. It's very difficult to find one endear, one, one neurodivergent person, and absolutely no one else in their family unit that is also neurodivergent. Now, they may not know that they're neurodivergent and they may not have a diagnosis, or they may not be aware of it, but it's highly likely <clears throat> that there are two or more neurodivergent folks living in a household together. So with that being said, it's important for us to think about how indie families can create lives that we love in our own households. So at Bridges Family Life Center, we've created a method called home training. And home training is a, um, is a method that helps historically marginalized families create lives that they love at home. So in the neurodivergent context, we can think about three foundational ways that you can begin developing uh, a, a life that you love as an ND family, as a neurodivergent family. So the first thing is let go of social norms that don't serve you. So I'll give you an example. I have an ND family for sure. Um, we have very strong um, um, genes that produce autism and ADHD. So um, it's very prevalent um, on uh, all sides of the family. So in my household, all three of us have, each of us have at least one um, diagnosis under the neuro neurodivergence umbrella. And so one thing that we decided to do is to let go of the social norms that screen time, too much screen time is problematic. So what we decided is that we are, are allow, we will allow our household to have unlimited screen time. This is something that is um, not necessarily uh, smiled upon for young children. Um, my son is eight, right? So um, ever since he was about two or three, we decided to take the limits off of screen time. The reason that we did that is because we found that screen time, particularly gaming, is something that is very important for the Johnson household, something that brings us joy, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So in order to make sure that that happened, we decided to remove um, our limits on screen time. So you can do that, too. You can think about what social norms are you placing on your family that actually don't serve you. And then how can you make changes in a way that actually makes your family more at peace and happier? Which leads me to my next one. So number two, give yourself permission to thrive in peace and in joy. So notice how before I mentioned that screen time is really important for the Johnson family. So we arrived at that because we sat down and we thought about what is it that makes us us as the Johnsons? What is it that bonds us? What is it that connects us? What brings us joy? What makes us tick? And what helps us be calm? What brings us joy? What makes us tick? And what helps us to be calm? If we know these things about ourselves, then we can prioritize those things. And those things can be just as important as, let's say, um, making sure that a family sits down and eats dinner together or um, making sure that a family keeps a, a clean a clean house or a clean environment, right? So 
you have to identify what what is most important for your family unit and then give yourself permission to thrive in that peace and in that joy. Make sure that you prioritize the things that are important to you as a unit. I'll give you another another example. Um, I uh, did not realize until about four or five years ago that I was limiting stimming in my own house, right? So I'm at home and I have the urge to stim and I'm not doing it. Why is that? I didn't realize that there are um, there there were times in my childhood where I was strongly discouraged from stimming or even punished for stimming, but really what was happening was um, that it wasn't that I was told that those things were bad. I was told that those things were disruptive or or um, annoying, and really that was happening because my parents had their own neurodivergence, right? And so. Um, sometimes autism and ADHD clash. Sometimes my stimming is very disorienting and disturbing for an adhd -er who may be trying to focus on something else and can't focus because of my stimming, right? So sometimes we, we um, find that those things clash, which we're going to talk about in point three. But all in all, what we can do is think about um, what are the ways that we can incorporate the things that calm us, that bring us joy, um, and how can we incorporate that into our daily lives as an ND family? That leads me to the last one, which is number three. Make your own norm, your own normal that is family-centered in order to combat loneliness, identity crises, and more. What if we lived in families where we were free? to be ourselves at home. How much more peace would we have? How much more confidence would we have? How much easier would it be for us to recover when we're out in the world that is not built for us? So it's important to think about what is fundamentally important for your family that makes you all feel free to be your full neurodivergent selves. And then to negotiate the challenges that you all may face when those things clash. So as I talked about in my former example, I may have a need to stem that clashes with my husband, right? So we have the opportunity to sit down and talk with each other and say, okay, what do you do when you need to stem and you need to focus? That could be something as simple as making sure we have plenty of space in a household so that we can all have our individual spaces where we can be alone and we can do the things that we need to do, right? That's something that we decided to do um, when we bought our new home. We bought a bigger home so that we could have spaces to be together and we could have spaces to be separate. But you can decide what works best for your family. How can you um, how can you create a new normal for yourselves that is family centered? It, it navigates and compromises on all the things that each individual member need in order to thrive and be in peace and not just individually, but also together collectively. So navigating these conversations at home helps us to develop tools and innovations for, for environments outside of the home, like school and work. But more importantly, we have the one place, if you have nowhere else, you have the one place where liberation is on the menu. And this fosters the hope and the empowerment necessary to continually combat loneliness, depression, and anxiety because you have this safe place in your own home where you can be yourself and you have your people that you chose, your chosen family, whether that be your, your partner, your children, your, um, your friends, uh, people that you chose that foster this, this um, family space that is liberatory. And that's what it means for neurodivergent families to create lives that we love. 
I hope this was helpful for you today. Again, my name is Janelle Johnson, licensed marriage and family therapist. Continue to enjoy all the things that you're learning at Neuroemergence, and I hope that we can connect soon.